Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, we're continuing our study in the Red Letter series, and today we are in Matthew chapter 18. Now, let me begin by saying that in order to understand this passage, you must take yourself back to the day, to the first time that you met Jesus. When your heart soared with the new revelation that was being poured upon you, when your eyes were opened and for the first time you saw the truth, you stepped out of darkness and into light. As you attempt to enter back into that moment, you should be experiencing those feelings of surrender, of humility, of the great need in your life, of the despair that you can do nothing for yourself, of the hope that Jesus alone is your answer, and of the anticipation of the future as you begin this journey into all things unknown. Well, if your mind has taken you back to that moment, let's begin Chapter 18, verse 11, which says, For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, goeth into the mountains, and seek that which is gone astray? You see, friends, this is an illustration that Jesus is using to signify the way his spirit moves throughout the earth and woos men unto him. And so he begins by saying, the son of man is come to save that which was lost. We were born lost. We didn't learn how to be lost. We were born lost. And from the moment that we begin to crawl, to walk, and to talk, we begin to seek some satisfaction that will fill that empty place in us. Because we are lost and we are trying to find our way out. It's almost as if we were at the bottom of a cave with many passages, yet only one leading back to safety and comfort. And when we are born, we are in the bottom of that cave. But as we begin to walk, to talk, to move through this world, it's as if we're trying to find the passage to safety, but we take many wrong turns along the way. And as they bring us to a dead end, we turn to a new path, hoping that that will be the answer to our freedom. And sometimes these paths can be very deceptive because they appear to be the answer. And yet over time, we realize that they are not. Now, your mind may be thinking of things like alcoholism, drugs, fame, fortune, success, money. And of course, these are a few examples of those false paths, but there are many more that could be named as well. But the point is, as, as we're trying to find our way through the darkness, there is one who steps forth with a lantern, a light, who says he is willing to guide us to safety. And we must begin our journey to safety with placing all of our trust in this, our new guide, because he alone is the only one that can get us out of the darkness that we're in. And that, friends, is the Son of Man, as mentioned here in verse 11. The Son of Man being the promised one to come, the Messiah. And we know that Jesus fulfilled perfectly every prophecy of the Messiah in the Old Testament through his life, death, and resurrection. And so we're really not placing blind trust in Jesus because we have much proof and evidence that Jesus truly is who he said he was. And as that proof begins to present itself to us and mount up in our minds as more and more evidence, we find it easier to relinquish the rule of our own lives and follow him as our leader, our commander, and our king. And it's not as if our guide is waiting at a central place in that darkness in that cave for us to arrive, he is seeking us out. For many of us, maybe we had grown comfortable in the darkness, in the cold, 
Maybe we had given up on any opportunity to find freedom. We crossed paths with others who told us of this guide, but we had no intention of seeking him. He was the farthest thing from our minds, and yet he sought us out. That's why many are in error when they say, I found the Lord. You found no one. He found you. He had been seeking for you, searching for you diligently for years. When you wanted nothing to do with him, he was seeking. When you were sleeping and adrift with your mind racing and pursuing fantastic things that would only leave you empty, he was diligently seeking you out. Because the implication in the passage isn't necessarily that we were lost, but we were comfortable in our lostness. And so he used the events and circumstances of this life to bring us discomfort so that we would recognize our lostness and begin to seek him as our guide. And that's how the thought continues in our text in verse 12 when it says, How think ye? If a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety-nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that if which is gone astray? And for many of us, even when he sought us out and brought us back to safety, like Gomer in the book of Hosea, we continually run back to what we've been delivered from. Or as the Bible also tells us, the dog returns to its vomit. And yet, as a loving shepherd, he continues to go back to dark and cold and lonely places, seek us out, and bring us again to safety. And you would think we would learn to quit leaving the fold. And yet, there's something in us that keeps drawing us, luring us back to doing the things and going to the places that we know are forbidden. And it's only when we begin to forget about ourselves and we think about our shepherd that we truly begin to understand our place in the fold. You see, the only reason we keep leaving the fold is because we're only focused upon our own desires. But when we think about the love that our shepherd has for us, when we think about the care he provides for us, when we think about how he so cautiously watches over us, when we become more focused upon his needs rather than our own, it is then our behavior changes because we begin to see things through his eyes, not our own. It's like that young child who stays out late one night and is so preoccupied with the fun that they're having, but if they could see their parents back at home consumed by worry, anxiety, and fear, the child would make better choices. And Jesus, as a loving father, understands that we are like small children. But as we are nurtured by him and we mature in our relationship with him, there comes a day where we quit leaving the fold. Well, back to our text. If you can remember the day when you met the Lord Jesus, if you were like me, that was a great day of celebration. It truly was, to borrow a cliche, the first day of the rest of your life. And as much as you were celebrating this newfound faith with great joy, the Bible tells us here in our text in verse 13, when he finds this lost sheep, he rejoices more over that sheep than of the ninety and nine which did not go astray. As much as you celebrated in your heart, it was nothing compared to what was going on in the kingdom of heaven. That's what is illustrated to us in Luke chapter 15 in the parable of the lost son or the prodigal son. We are told after this son reaches his dead end, he finds his guide, he returns home to his place of safety. He doesn't want to come back as a son. He only wants to come back as a servant. And yet in verse 20, it says, when he arose, when this son arose and came to his father, his father saw him, had compassion, ran, fell on his neck and kissed him. In verse 22, he said to his servants, bring forth the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his hand, shoes on his feet, bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Let us celebrate the return of my son. We are told in the same chapter in verse 8, 
that a woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, she will light a candle, sweep the entire house and seek diligently till she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls her friends or neighbors together. And she says, rejoice with me for I have found the piece which I had lost. And then Jesus says, likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. When you came into the kingdom, friend, when you fully surrendered and allowed the Lord Jesus to become Lord of your life, you caused great celebration in the kingdom of heaven. Thousands, maybe millions of angels began to celebrate and to worship the Lord Jesus Christ for seeking you out and bringing you home where you belong. And you know, even a more chilling thought than that, Jesus himself celebrated that another lost child has been found. Hallelujah, friends. What a great text of scripture. Let's look again at verse 11. For the son of man came to earth to save that which was lost. Or we could say, Jesus came to planet earth, left all of glory, came here to be spit upon, rejected and despised, to find you and show you the way back home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a wonderful thought. Well, friends, I pray that this word has encouraged you today. I pray that it has deepened your understanding of who Jesus is and more importantly, who you are and why you need him in your life. Now, as he wills and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.